again, we, we will accept sponsorship deals from Microsoft and Flashlight. I will straight up take Microsoft's money, baby. I, I, will, yeah. I, I will show up with my Microsoft's clippy t-shirt the soul on. Services. I, I, will, I will eat a boxed copy of Windows 95. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. Hello, lads. How's everyone doing this fine, chilly night? It might not be chilly where you are. Um, I'm here. It's I'm chilly where Stone I am. in beautiful downtown Athens, Georgia, switching the bits, doing the nightmare fuel all under Linux, as always, joined every week by uh, the man up north, Cthulhu himself. Uh, sugar is the devil. Yeah, yeah. Boucher. Hey, sexy. <laughs> and budget Steve Jobs and not a turtleneck, but close enough for us. Uh, Pedro Mateus. No, no turtlenecks around here. Oh, I haven't man. had a turtleneck in over 15 years. Turtlenecks are wait, delicious. Wait, wait, no. Dude. Hold, 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 hold okay. on. If, 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 if Pedro is going to be budget Steve Jobs, would be like Esteban was. <laughs> uh, Est- El Steve Job Bowl. <laughs> Esteban, Esteban <Yabos>. Emprejo. <laughs> Esteban Emprejo. There we go. Show title. <laughs> We're starting off great this afternoon. This You're evening. Welcome. Um, You're welcome. Together with you, everyone at home, join us live. Help us form. How do you say cocaine Voltron? Esteban Emprejo. <laughs> yes, <it's> Blanco. <laughs> Voltron da cocaína? See? <laughs> That's, ex- that's exactly what I would expect zombie Steve Jobs to say. <laughs> oh, zombie Steve Jobs speaks Spanish now. All right. In Zom- zombie Steve-, Steve Jobs says whatever we need him to say because he's right. dead. All right. So what's been up with everyone? Uh, Jordan, what are you up to, man? I know you've had a little bit of cold. You soldiered through. We powered through on top of your cold through the video game awards. And yeah. And- showed up and helping us with that because that, like, oh. that may have been a mistake because yes. <laughs> I mean, m- m- most, most of the like congestion is gone, but I still have all the chest stuff. So I will be making Bella, my doing my Bella Lugosi impression in plan nine from outer space, pretending to be someone else being Bella Lugosi. I don't know. Towards the end of the stream, I, I, I was getting pretty synced up with the, uh, Oh, I see the tissue. Boop. There we go. Let's mute that. <laughs> yeah. Pedro, do you have anything sexy going on in Britannia this week? <laughs> Can't be sexy because, uh, yeah, it's kind of cold outside. But, uh, nope, not really. I, the most eventful thing that happened to me this week was that I found um, my work phone, the Nokia 7.1, is getting an update to Android 10. So it's like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> oh, that, man. I gotta buy an <laughs> Android device. Uh, it's, I don't know. <laughs> I've done anything I really want. Um, dude, I got a bunch of network cards. If you follow me on Twitter, it's like, yay, arts and crafts time. Uh, recorded a lot of it. I'll put that up for Patreons because it's entertaining. If you ever, ever wanted to be just rambling on being old man Vin while like redoing brackets and getting to the point of trying to explain something. It's like, I'm a professional per- computer person than going, you know, this would be a lot easier if I took the back bracket out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> then Jackbox caught on fire. It was all recorded, but yeah, uh, stay tuned for that like later than today because I started to render that out. It's going to be like four hours, so maybe tomorrow night, maybe Monday. Uh, what's the horse up to this week? Uh, I mean, I mean, the f- horse has a lot in common with what's coming out of my body currently. It's all sticky and green. It's the Steam Linux Update of two. So we're we're we're, we're, get, we're getting these, I guess, once a quarter now. It's the uh, Steamworks Fall Recap. Um, Valve going over and listing all the shit that they've done so that people can stop bugging them about taking a thirty percent cut. Um, mm-hmm. The um, I mean, it's been pretty busy for them because they they launched two pretty big things is the new library, which I mean, I've adapted to. I don't completely hate it now. I'm just back to impartial until they release the next update. Yeah. And the uh, the other one was um, Remote Play Together, which is kind of the new killer feature because it allows you to play games with your friends that you couldn't have otherwise played because people don't want to write network code. So Valve has done and wrote your network code for you. There's also some crap about like trading cards and achievement that I'm pretty sure no one here really cares about but if you scroll down to yeah. the bottom of the article don't forget to spend all your money on the steam holiday sale fuckos 
<laughs> <laughs> yeah, reminder, we just had a sale, now you get another one. Uh, but yeah, localized trading cards? Come on. Really? Yeah. Was that really necessary? <laughs> for, yes. for Esteban? Of course. Of course. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Do not be done. Ah. I'm kind of with you, Jordan. Uh, that transition to the new library and all that, that was rough for a couple of weeks. Like, we were able to put it off, defer, like, I got to the point, I always just normally run the betas. And I'd backed out just to avoid that nightmare, but mm. it's usable now. I don't really notice it because it doesn't work. I mean, it does work and uh, it doesn't like slow down. Like the, the, uh, if, if, if you click on the game, it, pl it runs. And that's kind of the important thing. That, like, that's what yeah. I look for in that. <laughs> um, and it it's, you know, I, I don't have each top open with the thread ripper going, ooh, look at all that. Um, so it, it's in better shape these days. But we got some proton hotness. Just came out. Like oh, yes. Huh. Version 4.11.10, um, which they kind of lead off with the Halo. The Master Chief Collection is now playable. And I was like, really happy. He's like, yes, That's we finally tease. figured out That's easy anti-cheat. It's like, nope. nope. Some game modes are disabled due to missing easy anti-cheat support. Boo. And then uh, to complete this uh, bit of a roller coaster, it's like, oh, uh, we uh, finally... Um, improved uh mouse handling in some games uh namely fallout 4 fury metal gear solid 5 mouse behavior and it's like ooh, did they actually fix fallout 4 and they did they actually did uh, mm. uh previously if you had tried to play fallout 4 using proton and you had you know more than one monitor as soon as the mouse got to the point where it would cross the other monitor the game wouldn't hold uh the cursor there and you would actually see the cursor show up on the other monitor mm -hmm. so that was a bit of a problem the only way to work around that was to open up wine config in that proton prefix and set it to like uh virtual desktop mode and but that comes with its own share of issues uh namely if you say want to make use of the full screen like full size uh scaling that proton does to actually match your monitor's resolution instead of you know actually changing your monitor's resolution to whatever you're running the game at but yeah no they fix it 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 works now so that i think, that, I think that's great I think we're bearing the lead though is that you can now play trine for beyond 30 frames a second uh. <laughs> I, I can no longer have my. I didn't even know that was a bug. I guess a lot of people weren't playing Trine. I, I mean, um, we we still we still got to do it, man. We still got to do it. That's yeah. uh, something we pledged to do on Patreon. So yeah, stay. We must try and again at some point. <laughs> uh, Hang on, Pedro. I want you to get busy. Find another game breaking issue on Linux for playing yeah, that. Just, we'll just introduce one. Just <laughs> yeah. like introduce a pull request to the kernel that like if Trine Four .exe, like reboot the system. <laughs> <laughs> Something we're not going to have to worry about rebooting in the future is Insurgency. This is a game, this is one of those games that the type of people who love this game will cut you if you say a bad word about it. So you can play for free right now if you want on Linux, but get that out of your system because they are talking about the future updates for, I believe it's Sandstorm, correct? And, Storm. you know, Deep map optimizations, everything, you know, localizations over 20 languages, including uh, both versions of Portugal. Uh, <laughs> both versions of Chinese. Yeah. Simplified, traditional, Spanish. What, what's LA? Latin? Latin America. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Yep. So all good news until we get down to some things are going to have to cut. Uh, they definitely talk about we're in the business of being a business. So we got to focus on the console port, you guys and gals. Uh, however, in order to do that and some other stuff, uh, we got to make money. Things get cut uh, up to including the story mode, Mac support, here's where I'm coming, Linux support, local play on PvP modes, weapons on back, and new foregrip upgrade options. So it looks like if you're going to be playing Insurgency um, Sandstorm, it's going to be on Proton? Fair yeah. Fair? Fair? Yep. Hmm. Or we... I mean, uh, I they're not even using the Source engine anymore, right? So it would have been um, a sizable chunk to actually get Linux support going. And if they are, that's strapped for cash. Eh. Well, I, I see care. Pennywise, <laughs> which is legit. Uh, Pennywise has got like 700 plus hours into it. So I, I know yeah. that this is like... <laughs> 
seriously a big blow to you know, Pennywise. Yep, Pennywise. Yep. He's crushed. He, his little red nose doesn't <laughs> honk, man. It's just like deflated. Right. He's neat. Now, now he has no reason to come out of the sewer. Okay. Shame. Sure. <laughs> hey. Um, mobile games. That's right. You mean yeah, free mobile is. games. That's the only reason it, I threw this in here. Like, I indeed. Uh, draw Slasher. Um, it is free. You can download it now. I tried it out for five minutes. I, and I, you made it that far. I got as far to... It's like, man, you really want me to be precise in this tutorial. No, <laughs> I've, no, no, I, I, I squiggled my way through that tutorial, but it's, yeah, it's basically Fruit Ninja with less fruits and more Zambos, um, but it doesn't cost you anything. Nope. So, I mean, hey, man. you're looking for a time killer. You can go cut off Mega Man's hands, I guess. It's a hundred percent off, man. All this is going to be in our show notes. You have until I think December 20th to pick this up, but hey, free game Linux support. I want to throw that in the notes because hashtag LGC good mouse. Cares. Hey, good mouse. Yeah. mouse. Good mouse. Smile. Bad mouse. What and can... much along that uh, line of thinking, I decided to throw that one, um, Gun Gods, in the notes. But uh, it was only after I put it in the notes that I actually decided to try and download it, and I got a zero byte download. Apparently, the Linux depot is empty. It is free to play. Rami, and it does why? have uh, Linux system you requirements. Know Pedro, Pedro, I don't want to be judgmental. <laughs> But reading through the description of Gun Gods is a first-person shooter about a gun, gangster rap, and the rich culture of Venus. Yes, so. and you're shooting furries. Uh, but, it's, uh, you know, it's, I saw Vlambeer, I saw Free to Play, I was like, all right, okay, let, let's give it a shot. And, no, the, the, the Linux Depot is empty, and if you... Eat, like hit the proton button to see what the Linux version, uh, the Windows version um, runs like, it immediately freezes mm -hmm. as soon as you launch it. So it's like, yeah, no, I'm out. Okay, I give up. <laughs> I don't think anything of value was lost on them. No, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it would have been nice if it ran, but... But we whatever. do have some things that work this week. Yeah, spe speaking yeah, of works. working things, we're throwing chairs at it. Uh, Shovel Knight, King oh, yeah. of Cards. Uh, it's out. It's basically a prequel to Shovel Knight, but there's like a Pazak triple triad style game that comes along with it, and you can collect cards for it over the course of the gameplay. Um, not going to say too much about it because we have an entire section <laughs> devoted to it. Uh, oh, so yeah. I'll tuned. just say that uh, big, big kudos to the devs for sending us keys. It's currently nine ninety nine. Even when it does handstands, uh, single player, which okay, yeah. That's um, if you if you bought the Shovel Knight treasure trove, then you just get this for free. Oh, nice. Yep. Yeah. And being, you know, one thing you can say about this and the Shovel Knight system requirements are hella low on these. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. That yeah. Uh, yacht yacht clubs yacht clubs really good at like making NES games, like actual NES games. It's like good and tight because mm -hmm. nothing irritates me more. It's like, oh, this is a hipster pixel inspired. What is uh, it's nineteen gigs? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Make sure you have a ten series or above Nvidia. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a thing. But what is this last bit? Mirrors? This last bit is one we talked about long ago when it first showed up uh, as a coming soon because it looked really nice. It's um like walking simulator slash uh, point and click adventure game, and it's got these very polygonal characters. It's called Mosaic, and it's like yes, it looks really nice. Oh, that's funny. That's At how least people react to me when I'm on the subway tunnel. Yeah, <laughs> uh, as um you know indie games go this one is it looks aesthetically very very nice and i was kind of looking forward to it but then it comes out and it's like oh mixed reviews 58 uh of the total of 70 reviews are uh positive but pedro are you gonna be that person you're like oh hey what's this oh what does the internet think about it okay then i can form not my own opinion. really but yeah it's it usually for the chair acquisition by the way yeah, when you have, uh, like, a bunch of people sp spitting out their opinions about the games, it tends to, like, balance out, and, yeah, mixed is usually is like, oh, there's probably something wrong with it, isn't there? So, yeah, I'll, I'll... I have sent them an email. I would very much like to, um... Doesn't look good. I, I'm kind of afraid of it. I'd love to play it. Um... Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I like Cubism. 
Yes. <laughs> Ice. It doesn't, you know, yeah. adhere to the traditional uh, video game aesthetic. So, yeah. Maybe we'll I, I, I eat brown and gritty. I don't know. I just don't think you should <laughs> yeah. listen to, like, online video game critics, man. This is crazy talk. Bad idea. <laughs> They're just assholes on the internet. Hi! <laughs> Coming up next, some assholes on the internet beg for money. Rojo. I'd rather not go there. Rojo but, go. Uh, yep. go ahead. Yes. Uh, yes. So, hello, and uh, <laughs> welcome to that bit of the show where most of you completely skip the YouTube video and go directly to the news afterwards. That's okay. We know you do that. That's fine. But hey, y'all are awesome, and we do need to thank those of you, you who have you decided really to share to, your... Like, look at the fine grain. They just skip over your part. Now they're watching again. Hi. Yeah. You say that. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, yeah, y'all yeah. gotta watch out. You can see the graph. You can see the dip. This, this is part very, of the very the important information listen. at this moment. <laughs> okay, so that's the, and that is it. Might, it might save your life. <laughs> yes. Go to LinuxGameCast.com. Move your mouse over the support menu thing. We got Bitcoin. We got Patreon. We got a store. We got wish lists. We got affiliate links. All sorts of neat stuff you can do to support us. It's pretty nice. Um, you can head on over to Patreon. Er, yeah, I guess we can talk about the wish list. Oh, no, I'm just, I'm just, no, 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 you keep plugging. I'm snooping on your wish list. Ah, okay. <laughs> I mean, I mean, spe speaking of wish list, we got to thank Carl for sending Pedro some uh, T pins. But yeah, yes. Um, best way to support us. T pins. Is, of course, gonna thank you. <laughs> Patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. That's Bye. not what I thought it was. Um, <laughs> that looked up. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Type. Anyways, patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. Become a patron. Get cool stuff like access to the show notes or our Discord channel or RSVP to game streams. Or if you want to give us a bunch of money, you can be number four on here because thanks to thanks to NVIDIA drivers, we can in fact have a fourth person on the show. Yes. Not 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 for lack of effort though. Um <laughs> Yeah, we, we we got we got a store as well, store.linuxgamecast.com. You can buy some t-shirts, you can buy some mouse pads. We got we got a holiday shirt for you, right? We got the Hail Santa. That's still going on. Oh hell yeah, yeah. So if you want to, you want to you show your allegiance to the Kringle Lord up in the North Pole, forcing elves to slave away making toys for children at low low prices, you can you can <laughs> wear that and broadcast that to everyone. Jingle but, all the sleigh. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So Jingle Pedro, all the OSHA violations. Am I right? Um, we we, we got to get to this man because if you send anything through the wish zone, you can send a little card, and we have to read it, which is a horrible, horrible idea that we indeed. continue to practice. Yes, and um, Carl, um, I was disappointed. Carl! I was expecting something about uh, you know Whitey having to pay, but uh, no, it's like enjoy your gift from Carl. Carl, what, what was your gift Thank again? T Pain. <laughs> T pins, 150 T pins. Yes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, what do we have here? Oh, what? Oh, what's this? An, an, is another Carl, Carl gift? <laughs> Let me tell you what we have here. We just realized I don't have scissors. Um, Use your teeth. <laughs> Rip it. <laughs> Rip and tear. Rip and tear. <laughs> it's not that one. <laughs> That's a sweater. You say that. <laughs> I'm carefully putting that. Okay, what do we have? Um, enjoy your gift from Carl. So, Carl, <laughs> what's in what's in the bag? What's in the bag? <laughs> it's it's my new sweater. It, <laughs> oh, it, it's a bit Art Deco. <laughs> um, I I know you don't understand. <laughs> Fashion Jordan, you could go uh, Mad Max, full on Mad Max with that sweater. <laughs> my new sweater's name is Stefan. <laughs> so go fuck yourself. Um, it's awesome. <laughs> it might also double as cable ties. Put cables and jet in. I'm, I mean, you can make a sweater out of it. I'm just gonna wear it, man. This is gonna be my new yep. like scarf. It'll be brilliant. You're gonna be, you're gonna be like the crow, but instead of like belt buckles, it's cable ties. Uh Okay, so let's get into the news while I carefully put this somewhere that I don't instantly kill dead myself. I'm gonna go tie some <laughs> yes. Well, we, we got we got brand new Nvidia drivers. Well, Ven's going on about that. Uh, it's the brand new Vulcan drivers. Uh, they got rebased on uh, 
440.43.01. And it comes with some fixes. Um, you can get some faster driver load times under uh, Vulcan development scenarios, and they plug some memory leaks. So that's pretty nice. Um, yeah, the faster loading Vulcan is always a plus in my book, be it in development or in uh, you know actual everyday use. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, it does work, uh, at least over here in Neon. <laughs> I was super happy about this. Very excited because I'm running that Curdle 5.3, which the previous beta drivers told me to die in a fire and eat a fire while I was dying in it. This will compile against that. I was happy to get that technology back. And one of the issues I was having with the, you know, short-lived branch that actually worked with Curdle 5.3 was an issue exporting HEVC in DaVinci, and this seems to have fixed that. So I can get my .265, which smaller files, out, which means I can get the shows and stuff uploaded quicker, nice. which is awesome. <laughs> I do, the computer, like, has a heart attack, like, coming in and out of, like, any Vulcan game, and it's like, it seizes for a second. Not in a bad way. Nothing that would terrify you too much, but uh, <laughs> I did notice that. Yeah, something right. about uh, Vulcan context under a GLX context. <laughs> hey, you need yeah. Vulcan Doors. desktops. Right? Yeah, and uh, sticking with the drivers, let's get on to some Mesa. Yes, we have both NVIDIA and Mesa driver updates this show. It's like, ho oh, oh, fun times. But yeah, this one is the big one, at least uh, if you have uh, one of the new Navi... Um, GPUs because Mesa 19.3.0 is now available and it supports, it has proper support for all the Navis, at least um, 5700 series. Uh, 5500 might still be a bit of a crapshoot, but the 5700 now has proper support. You also get uh, OpenGL 4.6 and ACO. So, yeah, this yeah. is, uh, it got mainlined in. Uh, you can enable it by setting radv underscore perf test equals ACO. And you know what? If you got an AMD card, it might just be worth it to set that globally because yeah, in most, most it, of the cases, it is. It, is, it is as fast or faster than the LLVM compiler for shaders. And if you're just doing gaming on the boss box, you're not doing any sort of like Bitcoin mining or GP GPU, then there's no reason to not. Yeah, I tried it on uh, El Cheapo with the RX 570. And yeah, the, some games you see a noticeable performance improvement. The rest of them are they run just as well as they ever did. So, yeah. and the, and the the cool thing is, this is part one of what Valve is working on because the ACO shader compiler was just the first stage. Uh, apparently, they're working on some um, stuff to further improve shader compilation time for Vulkan under Linux, which will be pretty neat. So we were talking about this a little bit in the previous super shows. And, uh, how far are we uh, in twenty nineteen? Yeah, I guess it's going to be twenty twenty. So we have like a nice plug and play solution for um, AMD out of the box. So like the it, it depends on what it depends on what card you're getting. If you're getting a brand new card, mm -hmm. then it's it's a little sketchy because like so th it's great. Mesa 19.3 is out. You can you can use it. It's usable. It's fully tested. But distributions may not necessarily be shipping with it. Ubuntu definitely isn't. Um, Fedora usually keeps their Mesa in track with their release. Okay. Uh, if you're on Arch, it's rolling, so it'll make it in there relatively quickly. Uh, but the issue really becomes install media, right? Uh, mm. If you're installing yep. off of like a live image, then you're not going to necessarily have um, proper video support. And depending on your setup, you may not be able to install the distribution with a graphical mode, but text-based installers are pretty easy. So. This, this is true. Uh I even, you know, I remember when I got this 2060, like the Fedora couldn't hack it with a GUI. And I was like, bah. It's like oh, that's bad. But yeah, I, that's what I'm looking forward to simply because being able to recommend getting because the 5000. And if you get an are, RX 500 series, yeah, yeah that'll yeah. work out of the box with anything from like 1804 onwards easily that mm. no issues whatsoever. The, but yeah, the, if you the, get one of the 5000 series like the 5700, then you need kernel 5.3 and mesa 19.3 be advised yeah so there's yep. always going to be like the new cards if you have something older then you'll be fine yeah skyrim hoppitus hoppitus d9 vk <laughs> d9 v skyrim version not for zero Cro uh, I, th I thought it was crack a cola croca croca cola it's crack a cola <laughs> show title um 
Features. Well, the big one I saw that they've implemented the, well, they, uh, Frog has implemented the f- ability to run more than four gigajoules of VRAM in 32 bit applications. Why would that be right here? Modded Skyrim, Oblivion, etc. Done. Boom. I think that's brilliant. Still pulling a couple of bug fixes though, man. Hey, they fixed the mirrors in Max Payne too. That's been yeah. not bugging me. I didn't know that was an issue. <laughs> if, um, if you like D&D strategy games, you could play Dungeons and Dragons Dragon Shard. Finally. Slug, oh, there was a crime. That Metal. was one of the very few uh, real-time strategy games that I actually enjoyed. Yeah. <laughs> it was Eberron too, so. Eberron, yeah. Eberron doesn't get a lot of love. Just, what is Eberron? DDO is also in Eberron. Yeah. It was, it was, it was like a more mage punky setting as opposed to like the standard fantasy Wait lord of the rings ripoff thing mage punk's a legitimate genre or did you just make that up it's legit it is now <laughs> damn it all right it is now all right <laughs> bad news well i don't know we, we gotta figure out news. where we land on news everyone <laughs> yes so um this uh little comment here made a bit of a hubbub earlier in the week um, Datsujin, uh, AKA, um, this guy's name who I can't remember right now, um, has basically said, Hey, DXVK has gotten to the point where DirectX 11 is feature complete, but there are a bunch of, uh, there are a bunch of bugs that people are reporting that I can't fix either because I don't have the hardware or I don't have enough information or so on and so forth. So he's saying, um, that there's going to be, um, there's gonna there's the work work on the uh, native port or the standalone DXVK, the one that would allow you to just run uh, DirectX 11 natively under Linux, is might be halted um, because right now they just want to uh, include some Vulkan extensions and merge D9VK fully into DXVK, uh, and then put the project in maintenance mode. And people are freaking out because you know DXVK has been running at kind of a breakneck pace and it's been enabling people to play straight up games under Linux. Mm-hmm. In, and in many cases, as good or better than under Windows. Um, and it's it's we, we have to take a moment to just realize the fact that it's remarkable that we even got to this fucking point right here. Mm-hmm. Um, that within two years, we had a fully open source compatible, uh, DirectX 11 compatible uh, replacement library. Um, oh. And yep. the, the, and the, it's been Josh who's been working on this primarily for the longest time, and he's starting to get a little burned out. And doing this kind of shit is hard. It also doesn't help that games aren't the best program pieces of software. So even if Direct DXVK perfectly implements DirectX, there'll still be weird, hacky bullshit and driver implementations that you have to account for. That the like GPU driver teams have dedicated resources specifically for this. And well, I think it's th- fair to say game ready drivers don't exist because people did this shit right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and you you will doing something like this will require you to fight with that forever. And There's wine. No just, it. just ask the wine people how many times they've run into something that they implemented correctly. They know they implemented it correctly, but there's that one use case that it's just not working as it should. Why? Because it's relying on some Windows bugs. <laughs> mm-hmm. Look at it like this, man. Um, the internet as a whole, which I think in a caring way, but ultimately unnecessary way was, you know, it's like, this is classic burnout. And here's my advice. Mm-hmm. I think dude, dude's good on that. You know, for all we know, this could have been the result of just having a bad, day and needing to get out some steam man we've all had that yep. i know i've done that just like Bruh, just burn it to the ground man i'm done which is like ah i feel better okay back to work uh <laughs> one of the things uh dxvk going into maintenance mode it's not necessarily a bad thing because you know what maintenance mode is better than you know what fuck it i'm out mode yeah which <laughs> could happen from and as jordan was saying man this project has allowed us to go from DX11, oh man, guess we'll never play that one too. Ooh, I hope it's DX11. So, you know, it'll be accelerated properly with Proton. And you think about just having a small project that you've started to you know, play these games under Linux, and then a year later, two years later, Steam's picked it up and they're shipping with something. That's that's a big transition, man. But It yeah. is. We get, Speaking of, I really hope that Valve is cutting this guy some substantial figure checks. Right. Because he's basically their <laughs> Linux strategy right now. 
Yeah, the, the yeah to be it's said him and the D9VK guy. It's uh, Philip and Josh, respectively. Yep. So, yeah, seriously, if you need to take a couple of weeks off, it's fine. No one's going to blame you for it. But, yeah, DXVK is awesome. And for the most part, going, yeah, the, like you guys were saying, going into maintenance mode is not bad at all. No. It just get the code base to wherever you need it to be get the uh, standalone version working that would be awesome uh but yeah don't did, worry about anything you don't owe anyone anything if you want to tap yeah, out tap out that's yeah, 100%. it's your project do your uh, thing I, I, and again <laughs> the fact the fact that it's even gotten to this point is right. nothing short of a minor miracle we've all been this entire time in amazement how many times we're like this is such a breakneck pace so yeah <laughs> good on you mate so yeah, we, we, we we appreciate your efforts we we all you want all of us speaking, alex speaking Smith, of vulcan development you may have heard um you might know like who is this person well this person had to say it's a sad day it's my last day at feral it's been an awesome three years leading the vulcan development that's where you may know the name from um and working on our first switch boards thanks to everyone at feral for being fantastic to work with and to the Linux gaming community for playing all the ports I've worked on. Aww. So I wanted to throw this in because I thought it was news in two ways. One, there is some news that Feral has lost their lead Vulcan development human, which it's like, oh, that's... Hmm. Unfortunate. Yeah, it is. Two, at least he's going to Sony, so we know what the PS5 is going to be using, which probably is <laughs> not a surprise to anyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean they were awesome. running BSD, right? So it doesn't take a whole lot to get that to work. And you know what? <laughs> on on the bright side, if you're an aspiring graphics developer looking for a challenge and you're based in the UK, there may or may not be a position available for you. Hmm. This is yeah. true. <laughs> Our B is exciting. Bees are totally exciting. Man, we 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 got we got like so many B related stories in this segment. <laughs> it's kind of stupid. <laughs> Minecraft uh, 1.5, the Buzzy Bees update is available. This is previously available in the .net. They're so cute. They're ah, bees. Um, (laughs) But yeah, um, this was uh, available previously in uh, the .net version. It's been ported to the Java version along with a bunch of other stuff. I think this brings the Java version in line with the uh, Windows version of Minecraft. Um, And yeah, a bunch of... um, and yeah, apparently someone on, on Team Minecraft felt like brushing up their Java skills. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff about how the bees work. My knowledge of how bees work in Minecraft is tainted from Feed the Beast, which is a mod pack that lets bees make like uranium. So I'm not sure how these work currently. I don't think you can make uranium bees. <laughs> Sticky bees? It is. Look, this is uh, the Java, uh, Java version of Minecraft, and it... Yeah, whatever you can think of for Minecraft, someone's made a mod for it for this specific version. And yeah, this is the one that everyone's playing multiplayer on because of all the mods. And yeah, I I I went looking and I saw that I still had the um the launcher uh in one of the folders. It's like, oh you need to update the launcher. It's like, right, fine, I'll download the new version. It's it's a jar Launched file. It. So it it works. No, the the launcher is not a jar file. The launcher no. is Electron from the look of things. Ooh. Uh, I haven't played yeah. Minecraft in like three years, so my... Back when I was playing it, it was a jar file. Yeah, the, the Minecraft itself is still mm-hmm. a jar file, but the launcher that Microsoft have created, that's it, yeah, basically a, yeah, Electron. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I bought it because it was a Linux game way back in the day, and uh, it was just a jar file. It was like, you know, jar, whatever, dot, and I just did sort of... And I, it's just not my thing. I, I, I enjoy Legos, digital Legos. I it generated a map, I drew a dick, climbed up on the mountain, looked dick kept drawn, and that was like the end of the story. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I actually finished the game I, after they introduced like the end. I oh, you beat, got to you beat the Minecraft? end. I beat Minecraft. Is, and okay. It's like, I'm good. I'm okay. <laughs> is there a legit, is that like legit? Because something I do to screw with kids is I tell them I beat Fortnite. No, that, that I, I don't know enough about Fortnite to. And Fortnite has a single player campaign style of thing, so you can beat Fortnite. Didn't answer my question. 
Yes, it does. <laughs> Thank you. I thought there was a dragon. <laughs> yes, there is. that's DN dragon. Yeah, <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. Spe- speaking of dra- <laughs> speaking of dragons, though, I want you. I want you all to look under your seats. Because you get bees, and you get bees, and you get bees. Everyone gets bees. Uh, Not the is, bees. Uh, this is cheesiness. Our, from cheesiness.itch.io, I've linked all this stuff in our show notes. I have time. It's basically Sim Opera. It's a bee management simulator where you build like honeycombs and hives and stuff. Um, it's pay what you want. So um, you should probably give them some uh, bucks just to support the development of I think it's pretty cool, but it's built with good O. So. Yeah. It's always nice to see that, but... Uh, this has got the hex grids, which I don't know. And then again, it has bees. So bees. that might cancel out having to play a hex grid game. <laughs> Hive time. <laughs> Dude, um, it's out. It's a thing. Available for the old versions of Mac OS, because fuck new Mac oh. OS. <laughs> Man. 64-bit only. Dude. Kudos, Apple. That's, they did it. Give them credit. I mean... <laughs> well, I mean, they, they, they saw they saw a canonical and they're like, man, we can do this. We can do <laughs> oh, this so hard. Wait, so the, doing that gets people to hate you? We're going to do that. Mm. <laughs> also, also, also buy our $65,000 computer. This is, yes. okay, on, on the Apple thing, they, can you imagine Valve was like, uh-uh, and Apple's like, have you paid attention to how we roll? And they're like, oh, shit, all right, I guess we better do that 64-bit client. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> Dude, um, this is right up Pedro's alley. It absolutely is, and it looks like well, you run on it. This is uh well, maybe. Uh this is a PSX retro pie. And uh well someone decided to take As our uh, resident old... shoving hardware inside of other hardware. Yes, like a, uh, it's I like put, a PC uh, turn mini ITX trigger, yeah. motherboard and a 2400G inside an Xbox 360. This person, on the other hand, cracked open an old um, Sony PSX, the original PlayStation, and pulled out all the innards and put a Raspberry Pi in it, along with a fan, and um, actually went through the trouble of uh, actually wiring the controller ports to a USB... Um, thing and yeah it's got usb plugs at the top and if you plug in an actual playstation controller it translates the um translates the pen out from the playstation uh controllers into usb so that that's even more than i did that that that's major kudos right there uh also put a fan uh there's a fan at the bottom to keep the raspberry oh, pi cool i like that hiding the uh usb back behind the memory yep. card thing yeah well done yeah there's a lot this there's was a lot actually nice very touches. well done <laughs> yeah yeah like uh the, the whole thing where like they they, they replaced the cd-rom drive with the fan i'm like oh that's that's kind of neat yeah <laughs> it, it gives like the the same sort of noise of having a disc in there spinning and it keeps the Raspberry Pi cool. It's a it's major kudos. Slick, <laughs> slick job, man. And the thing about the PS1s, man, they're so plentiful. No one gets all screechy riri when you like sacrifice one yeah. to do something cool mm-hmm. like this. Which same with uh, same sort of thing with the Sega Genesis. There's so many genocide out there. <laughs> genocide. And Gen- Brazil keeps making them, so it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna hit the eject button yep. on that one. Hey, nope, man, nope, I nope, like nope, the fan nope, though. Nope. <laughs> That, that that's cool. This, this is nothing but happy. And hey, man, it's got Linux. It's got a Pi inside. Yep. This, it's a Dan station. Good on you, Dan. I yeah. would enjoy. <laughs> is there a guide? Is this just a pictorial? Does he? Yeah, I guess you just take um, a look. Yeah, you can follow. There, there's a lot of pictures, and he does a very good job of actually like going through all the steps. But yeah, the the whole taking the controller inputs and you know, just buying one of those uh, adapters that converts two um, PlayStation controllers into a single USB lead. Seriously. No, I'm so Very done good. with that, man. That, that's better than making a Xbox duck. And... That's your next project, Pedro. <laughs> You're going to shove a duck inside of an Xbox. Prepare yourself. It's going to smell horrible. No, 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 no. See what we what we got to do is you got to cram an NES into an Xbox One Series S. I'm going to cram Stefan into an Xbox. Right. <laughs> that sounds sexy. Coming up next, 
It's time to d d d d d d d d d d d d d d Peasants, kneel down. The time is here for the acquisition, where the accused must survive trial by Fedora, Neon, and Debian. And then, only then, can the question be asked, was it fun? This week we're taking a look at Shovel Knight King of Cards by Yacht Club Games, done on a C++ engine that they wrote themselves. Uh, You can pick it up for about 10 bucks, or if you bought the Shovel Knight Treasure Tube, you have it for free. What is it? Step into the gilded boots of King Knight and the biggest, most regal Shovel Knight game of them all. Leap, shoulder bash, twirl, gather new subjects. Strategize your way through this prequel in your quest to become the king of cards. Uh, Yacht Club sent us some keys, so thank you very much for that, sir. It was great. Uh, let's get started. Uh, then, how to, how to run. Dune. Oh, let's see if I can hit the right things this week. Uh, yeah. <laughs> boop. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Haha, deal with it. Uh dude, over here on Debian 10.2 on the 1920X, 32 gigs of RAM, NVIDIA 2060, all that hotness in VMEs. Best played at UHD all over your face. Uh, it, it, no issues whatsoever. I mean, this is kind of what you expect from Yacht Club. That business, and that business is, is gonna work, which it does out of the box, no issues. Performance-wise, this hipster pixel. We were kind of talking about this uh during the break. What I really like from these cats is, you know, it it's just going to run. It's going to be very performant, even on toaster level hardware. So no issues at UHD at 2160. I mean, solid 60. Them graphics, them pixels, them hipstered, just dandy. I like it. I, I like the art style. I, you know, give hipster pixel um, some grief, but not when it's done right. It's done right here. There's no graphical artifacts, or I guess you could say maybe it's not accurate. If you remember back in the nest days, when you couldn't have but so many sprites on the screen before things got fady. Controls. I tried it with everything, man. The X clone, PS4, Steamy controller. Boom. Loved it. PS4. You even had the correct button prompts. So as soon as I can find my trackball, which is in front of me, that, that didn't come out right anyway. <laughs> Four chairs. Yeah, on uh, Fedora 3064-bit with the 6700K with the hyper-threading enabled and the mitigations turned on because I'm a crazy person. Yeah, uh, (laughs) yeah, um, it does, in fact, launch. I I guess there's a 1080 Ti in there, but, I mean, that doesn't really matter for this game. Um, Performance at 1080p, there's pixels, and, you know, there's just just so many pixels. It will drive you insane. Uh, Control-wise, yeah. With Steam input, without Steam input, it wasn't seeming to like my DualShock all that much. Um, Although Pedro brought up in the pre-pre-Super Shows that maybe I should have tried via Bluetooth, because apparently it works fine with Bluetooth. This is one of those weird situations where wired does not work. I didn't like how it felt on the uh, Steam controller, so I ended up settling on the uh, Xbox Classic. Good choice. Whatever. It works. It works perfectly fine. There's a reason it sort of became the default uh, PC (laughs) controller, because it does its job. Um, so, uh, I will give it three chairs for that. Yeah, and over here in KDE Neon with the Ryzen 7 uh, 3700X and the GTX 1080, it launches, it launches just fine. The performance, uh, with V-Sync on, on my 144Hz uh, refresh rate monitor, it caps the frame rate, but anywhere between 62 and 63. So, clearly, that V-Sync is just lies. Whatever it's doing, I'm not sure, but it it is full of lies. Uh, the graphics, yeah, look at this trigger knot right there. Uh, it, yeah, everything renders just fine. Um, and yeah, the controls, the DualShock 4 uh, V2 version uh, worked out of the box. And like Ven already mentioned, it had the absolute correct prompt. So very good on them, four chairs. Mm-hmm. Well, there you go. Yacht Club knows how to make a game, but well do they done. know how to make a fun game? <laughs> Let's find out. Oh, man. Do we got to support him? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Jesus. Fuck this thing's Nintendo hard out of the box, man. Um, the, Really, my only legitimate complaint was directly related to the level of just nightmare difficulty for my old ass out of the box was like right at the beginning. Your mom it's like, yo, remember to press up to talk to people versus to what I actually got to the part to talk to people. Like, how do I talk? Mm-hmm. Oh, right. Man, game. It took me a minute to get there, but that's on me, not on you. 
what do we have here? We have hipster pixel platforming done right. That's what we have here. Because by right, I mean Mega Man, Rock Man, NES style. The original really reminded me of Mega Man. This, eh, a little bit. Because this revision, it does away with the shovel and replaces it with what you're seeing on the screen there. More of a dash and um, more of a dash spin. You know, that really seems simple at first. But the Mario-inspired spin jumps after that, that's what follows. That adds a whole new dimension of just, damn it. Damn it. <laughs> a word I found myself saying aloud mm, more often than I think any other game in my first hour of play throughout 2019. So, got club. Well done. Well done. And I was enjoying myself when I was doing that. Uh, because it kept me coming back. And we've discussed multiple times on this show, this very show, how difficult that is to do. To actively have something that will piss off the player. Cause the player to maybe not rage quit, but... My, little as makes no difference. Get a few steps away from it and go, you know what? I, I'm i coming back to it. And it did that. It really managed it well. So, you know, let's see. What do we have here? Uh, then I ran into the card game. That's a real thing. They kind of give it away in the title. So I wasn't necessarily surprised or upset unnecessarily. I was waiting for it to kick in. But to the game's credit, you know... It starts out with that Wicked Heart platforming, so you know what's up right from the start. It's not until a few levels in, much more progression, closing in on that first hour mark, that you have to deal with the card nonsense. Spoilers, not a fan of RNG card bullshit. That said, the game did a proper job of explaining how to card correctly, and on the surface, it was simple enough that even I could figure it out, which is always a bonus. Uh, it's about capturing jewels, hot, steamy, freshly shaven jewels, and... At the end of the day, it's still a card game, go. I mean, it's a card mechanic inside of my Wicked Hard Fuck You platformer. So, man, to the card stuff, you, I don't know if I'm ever going to have my opinion changed on that. But shortly after that first match, it was like right back to the hell of platforming. So it would appear, at least to me from what I've played, that you can kind of deal with the card sections. Kind of like a Manos, Hannah Fate. You know, it's like get back to the combat stuff, which I enjoyed more than the RNG card stuff in that game. But don't quote me on that, since I am aware that there's a... Uh, it, it's not as simple as I'm making it I, on the surface, I think, to bullshit my way through the card sections. But there is deck building and uh, several of the mechanics that exist, along with like power-ups that allow you to just straight-up cock with your opponent, like swapping out their cards and nerfing stuff. So that could be fun. I likes it. It's more Shovel Knight. And at the end of the day, it, it, it's fun, man. So, yeah. I'm gonna say check this out. Yeah, we more more precision platforming, my favorite. <laughs> no, like 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 racing games. It's a genre I can respect, even if I don't particularly enjoy it. And Yacht Club Games continues to make good quality ones with uh, level design reminiscent of like a lot of old N Nintendo Super Nintendo games. But they they don't do the thing that a lot of people making retro style games will do, where they like, oh, we need to make the games exactly as they were. Now, there's a lot of like modern convention and uh, design here that makes it all it, it, it enables stuff like speed runs and like single life runs. Or if you just don't care about stuff, you can continue on with your life. It's it's pretty good. Um, the platforming is now a dash and spin mechanic where, you, you know, you dash and stuff, mostly enemies in certain terrain because there's some you can't. The spin off of and then you start spinning like a pretty gold ballerina and you know you can you can say you can say there's something to be said for uh, restrictive modes of gameplay forcing the player to adhere to a specific set of constraints and you can could squeeze a lot of compelling gameplay out of those constraints because you know you, you force people out of their comfort zone i i can i can respect that as for the card game yeah it's it's, it's meh i mean place cards so that you can push them later make sure you don't get pushed Got to beat the schmucks to move on. I don't care about card games. So I <laughs> stopped playing after that. Um, I mean, yeah, like like Ven said, there there are many moments in this game where you will just like get up and walk your ass away and just be like, you know what? Fuck this. And then you come back and you're like, OK, I'm, 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 I'm sorry, baby. Let me try again. Um, and yeah, it, it, it plays like a Nintendo heart. It plays like an NES game, right? So it's, it's pretty unforgiving, but the modern convention that stops you from like getting game over screens 
and have to like start from the very beginning. That's nice. I like that. Um, I'll give it two chairs. It's all right. Um, if you like Shovel Knight, you'll probably like this. It's more of the same. If you don't, then you won't. Actually, I did not uh, like Shovel Knight. I did not like Shovel Knight at all. Um, it no re- represented a glorification of nostalgia for old, hard, hipster, pixel platformers. And it didn't really do anything that was different enough to make me enjoy it. King of Cards, on the other hand, I would say does do a couple of different things and introduces the whole card game. Um died. Yes, I did. Uh, that happens a lot. <laughs> uh, the um, as someone who enjoyed like Triple Triad in uh, Final Fantasy VIII and Bazak in Knights of the Old Republic, I can absolutely see the appeal of Joustus, the uh, card game that's uh, being featured here. Uh, as, as tired as I am of hipster pixel platformers, limiting the character to only being uh, able to attack with the shoulder bash and the dash that uh, precedes it, and then the uh, little spin that uh, comes afterwards is... Uh, it helps. It, it it certainly helped me enjoy the game a heck of a lot more because, oh, my movement is uh, tied to my attack mechanic and I have to make use of it to actually get through levels. Like, yes, yes, I, I like that. I like being limited by that because, I don't know, for some reason, uh, that in my brain made it, oh, it's not an action platformer anymore, it's a puzzle platformer, and I was okay with that. So... Yes, my brain appreciated the extra bit of um, required thought uh, as how to get to the next platform and actually how you actually progress through the level and how you actually defeat certain bosses. So while I didn't enjoy Shovel Knight, I very much did enjoy uh, King of Cards. Three chairs. Okay, well, there you go. That's all right. Check it out. It's 10 bucks. It's not going to cost you much. And you yep. may have already had it <laughs> if you uh, bought the treasure trove. Dude, any any uh, final thoughts? I think it's well done. It like I went back and I played the originals. It's like, oh yeah, I remember this is Mega Man, which Shovel Knight's got on Mega Man. But they've done a lot of fun things. It's got a good sense of humor to it. It doesn't take itself too seriously. And um evil when it does handstands, man, nine ninety nine, so you can't beat it. Yeah, the the price is definitely right for this one, and yeah, it most likely won't change your opinion about uh, hipster pixel platformers, but I don't hate hipster pixel platformers, I just hate the ones that revel in their own nostalgia and do nothing else, and this one didn't. Hmm. Good on it. (laughs) Okay, then. Coming up next... We're apparently going to go through the wardrobe, into the closet, into yeah. the magical land of Tarnia. And also, Basildat <laughs> has many things to say to Pedro. <laughs> many. <laughs> many. And, well, maybe that review uh, changed your um, perception of hips or pixels, or maybe it didn't. Either way, chances are you can probably tell us something that's really, really um, offensive. And, well, we'll take it. We'll absolutely take it. We'll take it like a champ. And you can do that by going to LinuxGameCast.com. Like a diabetic alien with a (laughs) gout. Yes, you need space insulin insulin to keep you going. (laughs) But yeah, go to LinuxGameCast.com, hit the contact button, and make sure LGC Weekly is the show that you're sending your hate mail to, and we will feature it right here, right now. And uh, yes, track five is armed. (laughs) We don't know where it is, but it is armed, so keep a look. Get down! Get down, Mr. President! We've kept it full of arm uh, insulin, so the arms don't fall off. It's full of raspberry pies. Clearly. That sounds like exactly like something a controller stickler would say. Mm-hmm. Full of arms. <laughs> like still that. Wow, that's or a Santa long Claus. one. <laughs> okay, Santa so Summing it up, Sildat sent us a bit of hate mail about, uh, well, we talked a while back about the um, new light guns that are being created. Uh, One of them was being developed by, what was his name? Um, Light gun. Andy Sinden. And uh, yeah, it's like, because light guns nowadays, they don't work because LCDs don't work like CRTs. So the light gun can't actually see what you're pointing at. But... It's a very long-winded way to say that he sort of sees 
where I was coming from for the arguments I made against, you know, light guns nowadays is like, do we really need that? But at the same time, his question was, uh, how difficult would it be for wine developers to forcefully create the border that the wine versions of the light gun games that showed up for Windows uh, created that little overlay? There's also a Raspberry Pi uh, thing that creates that very same overlay. Um, and what was it? Um, using compatibility mode on Windows and letting the driver for the Sinden light gun layer um, draw its border over the gameplay. Maybe Strider could also look into it and maybe come up with a way to get the border around the gameplay, I'm guessing for Lutris. Lastly, kudos to Andy Sinden uh, for developing scripts and turning a Raspberry Pi into a mod box that overlays that border on old games played on real hardware. The fact he even bothered to go that extra mile is very telling about how much he is dedicated to the preservation of light gun games. Anyway, keep on rocking, folks. Thank you, Sil. That, that was massive. Uh <laughs> Can we just stop shooting our monitors? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Fair question. Uh, who had light guns growing up? Canada's too nice. Would you have a light hockey stick? No, I didn't have. I didn't. <laughs> so, I, I, I mean, like, there, there were light, guards, light guns in our arcades. Like, I'd play Time Crisis and, like, House of the Dead and shit. Um, mm. But, like, I, I... I had the Saturn light gun for House of the Dead and Virtual I, <laughs> by the by my parents were very very anti-gun and by the time i got a console i was like more into like shoot uh rpgs and stuff like that so i never really ended up playing like house of the dead or any of the ones that required the playstation light guns which were you know playstation light guns i had hogan's uh alley i think you like shut people Hogan, toward... hogan's alley yeah i think yeah. that sounds right that sounds legit that, that was my entirety of it. That was a very unused peripheral because I don't know how many games the NES had. That well, that. that was the thing. If you bought the NES originally unreleased, it came with the light gun. What? Because with the duck hunt. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. was two player, by the way. Yeah, you could control my the duck. cousin had uh, an NES with duck hunt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. And, and 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 then there was like the fuck you Super Nintendo light gun that was like a straight up shoulder mounted. Yeah, gun. right. It yeah. was the bazooka. They're like, oh, it's perfectly normal. What's it for? Golf. Um yeah. <laughs> Power Glove, baby. Power glove. Cool, man. Thanks for sending that in. That's interesting. I don't know, man. Pew 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 at the monitors. Uh that is legitimately a real issue though, because there's no oh, yeah. way yeah. to uh, really track <laughs> that. So But on the on the bright side, your dog can watch TV now. So This is true. Sixty furps. <laughs> yeah. Last but Tar not least, man. I read this as tar Tarnia, but it's Tarina. Tarina? Tarnia? And <laughs> have you been to the Oh man, Miss, you went, you, Mr. You, Tumnus! Mr. You went Tumnus, to the wrong I have a wardrobe. business proposition for you. This isn't Narnia, <laughs> this is Tarnia. Yeah. This is it's an entirely different closet I need to come out of Hi there, my name is Tarnia Redacted. I work for a few brands who occasionally like to advertise on podcasts like ours, and I'd love to include you on my list of options. Do you work with brand sponsors at all? We only take so sponsorships from two companies, Fleshlight and Microsoft. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> and so far, none of them have offered, so this yeah. 100%, man. Uh, no, we get these. <laughs> Not we probably get about four or five of these offers a year. I thought I'd throw one in because this has been like one of the less egregious ones. Okay. Like, <laughs> like we would like. This was to, just a question. It's the, like yes, I'm person. I do PR things. Dude, do you want the, a sponsor? The other ones are like, yo, we'll give you some money. Could you just talk? Not, and it's completely unrelated. Should like hold this up during your talk about this during the podcast, and we'll give like go fuck yourself. Yeah. That's why yeah, we just, have Patreon because you know what. We love our patrons, but most importantly, they let us not have to. And this has been brought to you by, you know, mm -hmm. that we, we again, we, we will accept sponsorship deals from Microsoft and Fleshlight. I will straight up take Microsoft's money, baby. I, I, will, yeah. I, I will show up with <laughs> my Microsoft's clippy t-shirt on. Microsoft services. I, I, will, I will eat a boxed copy of Windows 95. Live. Dude, <laughs> dude we, 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 will, we will do an entire show on the Xbox One Series S. Like streamed from the series S, <laughs> <laughs> balancing on them. Oh, yeah. Xbox still some beautiful people. It's not going to get any worse than that. Definitely not any better. So I do believe 
It is time. Tech Hero Music. You can always find us around 8.30 Eastern Standard Moon Time. Uh, if you are one of those beautiful party patrons making this show possible, loud, live, and most importantly, commercial-free, come join us in Discord for audio. Participate in the pre-pre-super shows. And we also get a custom RSS feed if you want to listen to it after the fact. Scream at me at Vin Stone on Twitter or at Vin at mast.linuxgamecast.com. I'm there. I'm Square, and that's Jordan. I'm Jordan. My segments were brought to you by Potato. <laughs> potato. You can find out more about Potato at the Burning Fool on Twitter or at mass.linuxemcast.com. I'm at Frojo. Shit, is there a dot potato? There is now. There is now, yes. Uh, so I am Peter Mateos, and you can find me on Twitter at unaccounted4, because that... that that's the last bit of uh, social medias that I'm on. If you ever go away, Twitter, I'm not on the internet anymore. <laughs> Warm Rip Twitter, Mateus, man. That I don't know. Es, es, Esteban Travayo, Esteban. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Okay. Thank you. We love you. Tide of fire. Here's some credits. Bye. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll pee on your carpet. Drip drip bark. Chaotic puppy. Oh man, we're we're a week away <laughs> from uh, having to duck Star Wars spoilers. Yeah, no, right. Got got to thank out there. Foxy, and Fox Empty, Dog. Atomic, Mike G, Barbara, Aldis, Hoplo, Mackey, and Scott. Scoop. Now the Scoot. producers. Like Jupiter Broadcasting, All Mentor, the Mike, oh no, Lutris, uh, Colin, Ryan, Ertain, System Texas. T, Master Dark, the Douglas. other Jordan, the Bro other hit. Pablo, <laughs> Asimoni, <laughs> Zoe, uh, oh, dog. Gonzo, Gonzo 2000, Belkirk, yeah, Sherry Week, Linda, Kylenix, Nova, James. We've got to add Carl. Carl, we love King. you. Oh, shit. We, we, oh, got, we got. Oh, we, we didn't still no dawn in that we're, big time <laughs> travel. Fra Frank is still catfishing us. Oh no, he doesn't look like anything like his Tinder pics do. I got to I got to do the fuck wall thing. I haven't made up my mind. But I think yes. I have. <laughs> <laughs> Frank shape. needs to walk away in shame because he's holding the old, yeah. old Listen, <laughs> fuck wall. If, if, if he wants time travel, he can. It's not, but he can do it on his personal time. Point. Wait. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> ah, bye. More, <laughs> More rug pissing. More rug pissing. <laughs> Five dudes. <laughs>